powered by the Zapata Bread Studio. This is Straight Out of Jersey with Jersey Jay Z. Welcome, everybody. This is Straight Out of Jersey. I am Jersey Jay Z, Joe Zapata. And my guest, he has a documentary dropping tomorrow at 10 p.m. on Vice TV, and it's The Nine Lives of Arnold. Talking about Arnold Schwarzenegger. My guest is my good friend and my boy, Greg Valentino. What's up, Greg? What's going on? Jersey jo- I love that name, by the way. Jersey Jay-Z? That's right. I'm I'm uh, New York Greg V. <laughs> yeah, so, no, I- Greg, um, we want to talk about, um, obviously, about the Vice TV stuff. But also, let's talk about some of Because you've been in so many different things. Absolutely. So many different... So we could talk about some of the things that people don't really see, the background stuff. You know, like um, the first thing we're talking about, the Vice TV. Where did you film that? Okay. <clears throat> Kobe. Um, I filmed it. Uh, uh, let's see. The Vice TV one I filmed in Brooklyn. It's okay. a, uh, at Vice Studios. It's, oh, wow. It is. It's in uh, Vice Studios. I actually filmed it for A&E, but then I don't know how Vice wound up taking it back. I, I guess they're in together. I don't know. but Yeah, I think so. You know, I've been working with A&E for a while, doing a bunch of different things. Um and uh, what people don't know is that once you start with a project, you know what I'm saying, and, and you get to know people on that project, you do other projects. Do you understand? So whatever they need somebody, like Dave, I remember when I told Dave, he goes to me. And it was funny, Dave didn't even talk about this. Holy shit, I didn't think about that. We didn't no, even talk about it on After Hours. No, no. Holy Let's shit. Go Let's go on, Dave. I think Dave did that purposely. Dave, if you're watching this, you did that purposely. Mm-hmm. Anyway. You lousy rotten. Anyway, so um, what happens is once you know one guy, right, and you start getting in with one producer, is which is what happened, okay, This uh, the producer for, uh, you know, does A&E stuff and other shit, then they start calling you for other projects. You know, oh, you're available for this, you're available for that. And that's how I got the project. Um, so uh, I went I went down to Brooklyn. We filmed down there. Uh, I did, it's on Schwarzenegger. I did two, one on Schwarzenegger and one on Hulk Hogan. I don't know how big the Hulk Hogan one is. They did it. It was a smaller part in Hulk Hogan, but they did, you know, the whole Schwarzenegger thing. So it, it was kind of cool. And, uh, yeah. you know, it's, I a, took, big, it's a big I'm studio, working. right? Big. Oh, big. yeah, man. It's huge. It's huge studio. You know, what's funny was <laughs> we were doing this. Um, okay. I don't know how to explain this to you, but they have a podcast too as well. It's not a podcast like this. It's a, um, it's a podcast that they do for Hollywood. I, I don't know. I really had to explain it. It's almost like an audio book and they had you come do it and all this stuff. So they had me do this and we were down in this one studio and it's like Zoe Saldana and all these other fucking big movie stars there and shit. And we're doing it on a sound studio and it's one of the biggest sound stages in, uh, you know, in the, in the business. And it's, uh, it's in Brooklyn and it's, um, anyway, uh, I forgot what the hell her name is. It's underground dungeon or something stupid like that. But anyway, so we're there, and uh, you know, I'm looking for now. In, in in there, they have like, uh, they have like, you know, different studios. Like they have, you know, the sound where you're going doing the sound. And what people don't know is every time you watch a movie, if a guy opens up a bottle, like we're gonna open up a bottle and hear this, and and then you hear him pour, you know, pours in there, dropping ice cubes in a glass. All that shit's done on a sound stage. Even though they do it in the movie, they will actually take the sound out and, and put it in. Okay, we put it back in every movie. There's not a movie, whatever TV show that doesn't go through a soundstage. Okay, and the same thing with um, like when I did Bigger, Faster, Stronger, I had to go through the soundstage and do the part where you see me going, you know, kids are playing Grand Theft Auto, shooting cops, killing cops, you know, Mm -hmm. and all that stuff. You know, where's Britney Spears kissing, you know, whatever uh, Madonna, all that shit I did in person, but then they made me redo it in a soundstage. So that the sound is crisper, clearer, and it flows nicer. Oh, anyway, wow. so we're wow, in a, I didn't know that. We are, we're in a soundstage doing this uh, this thing that I'm doing. And it's for the book. I have a book, Death, Drugs, and Muscle. You know, it's a published book. It's not like he self-published it. All these other momos put on a freaking, you know, on their Facebook and shit. This is a real published book. It's, a, it's, it's really awesome. It's got, you know. I've had Hollywood people involved and everything. And so I don't mm-hmm. know what's going to ever happen out of it. But anyway, we did this thing and, and uh, I'm looking for my girlfriend in the friggin' in the, I know you're not sorry, <laughs> but we, we're looking for my girl. I'm like, okay, where's my girlfriend? You know what I mean, like, where the fuck is she? Because uh, 
you know, we're going to get at lunch. Mm-hmm. And, I'm looking, and, and there's different stages in the sound stage, you know what I mean? But they, they're almost like different rooms, different sections. And there's a room where they do like, uh, where they do talk shows. And when people sit on a couch and like get a Huffington Post and all that shit, mm-hmm. which I've on that show. And uh, they sit there and, you know, talk show host sits there with the desk and all that shit. And there's a desk. I go in and I look and my girlfriend's sleeping on a fucking bed. <laughs> well, that's, that's Holy shit. That. <laughs> and if you know her, I, I, not for nothing, but I also did a reality TV show called uh, Troublemaker. And um, and I was over at a film, uh, this guy who actually has his house as a film studio. It's just fucking unbelievable. He's done a lot of films. He did, I, I, I think I was talking to Joe, you people watching, so I was telling mm-hmm. him all about that. But uh, he did this show where down like... um. You know where they investigate different things? Like, well, you know, this week we're going to be going down to the swamps of Florida and looking at, like, you yeah. know, the, mm-hmm. the snakes and all that shit. You know, the, the pythons that people have let go free. And now they're like these giant monsters. And he, he was the one. Hello, is that, who is it? Or is that mine? That's not mine. I don't think mine's here. That's not mine. Here we go. Lucia. Okay. <laughs> hey, George, if you're watching, this is for you. Lucia. <laughs> Out of here. <laughs> uh, well, tell her I'll call her when I'm done. Anyway. <laughs> I'm with my mom, she have no idea. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, talking about the snake. Okay, so, you know, like he, this guy, this producer was one of the guys. It's a very famous show that they have. A, it was on all the time. I think it was either a and TLC, one of those shows. Mm-hmm. Where they would go, or even it might have been Animal Planet, where they go and they're looking around and they're like trying to find like these giant pythons. And he would tell me, dude, we would throw them out. You know, like when we're looking for, like, you know, when you're watching these shows looking for Bigfoot, right? Mm-hmm. And they're filming guys and they're in the woods at night and they're setting up cameras. And, you know, somebody mm-hmm. says, we're looking for Bigfoot and we have uh, some infrared cameras. And, oh shit, look. Look, look, look. And they're looking through and you see this thing like fucking 100 yards away. And it's a little thing. It's like kind of hiding behind a tree and maybe comes mm-hmm. out back. Mm-hmm. And, this, and all you see is infrared. That's like one of the fucking like producers. producers. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, my God. You know, they go down there and they do that shit. And he would tell me that's that's what they would. Then they would find the giant snakes down in Florida. One time they're driving and they're in the car and they're talking. And all of a sudden, they're like, there's one right there. There's one on the side when they pull over. Meanwhile, they had just put it there. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, wow. So, anyway, so all that stuff is staged. Oh, God. Yeah. You know, dude, let me tell you something. If there was Bigfoot, you, you, there's dinosaur bones. There's bones of everything. Mm-hmm. You know, there's yep. bones of bugs. You ain't, there's no bones of Bigfoot. Where Has anybody ever seen a bone of Bigfoot? Like, is there any Bigfoot skeletons or any of that shit? Now, there no. was a giant ape called giant, uh, giant, Gigantopus, bleh, Gigantopithecus. <laughs> that was like fucking... You know, like 10,000 years ago. I ain't none of them. Yeah. But anyway. Yeah, but you were also on um, the, was it the uh, Jersey Shore? Yes, I was at the Jersey <laughs> Shore. But I just want to say this. I was at this guy's fucking studio, same okay. shit. It was his house. His <clears> giant <throat> mansion and shit like that. And downstairs, a giant studio and a movie stars coming. He does all this shit. And I'm down there and we're doing this film and fucking... Uh, same shit. My girlfriend was upstairs sleeping on his couch and his wife comes home and she's like... Who the fuck are you? Like, you know, what are you in my house? <laughs> anyway, um, I was yeah. on, I was on, sure. on the Jersey Shore. Uh, you know, I know Snooky. And, yeah. um, you know, Snooki, they staged that stuff too, right? Uh, that stuff was kind of staged when you were in the oh, store. Listen, everybody that watches the Jersey Shore, you people aren't that fucking stupid, are you? I mean, you know, the, the kids, they, you know, the Jersey Shore kids are working in a, in a t shirt factory, right? T-shirt mm-hmm. store. Making fucking. What do you work in a t-shirt store? If you go to freaking, if you guys go to Seaside Heights and you go to a t-shirt store and the kids that are in there making that shit, what do you think they're making? 15, 15 an hour? 15, 20 dollars an hour. You really think that they're working 15, 20 dollars an hour? You know, meanwhile, they're, you know, they're getting like 30,000 an episode. An episode, correct. But anyway, you know, I was in there and he, you know, that was all set up and shit. I came in and, and uh, the guy Vinny, uh, Vinny, whatever they call him, Vinny something. And then, then there's the, Pauly D, uh, Pauly D and Ronnie and whatever. Right, the Pauly D guy. I, Ronnie's the only one I never met, but Pauly D. Matter of fact, Ronnie's girlfriend was in my grill. Uh, that the, in your grill. Oh, really? I'm trying to wait. What's her name? I forget. I her name. I'm about Ronnie. To say, yeah. Uh, we, 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 they she had a nickname or something. Uh, not Jay Wow. Is it Jay Wow? No. Jay Wow's on it. Not Jay Wow. Fuck. Anyway. I'll call Lucy. She's out here on the phone in a second. Um, uh, anyway, she was like 
no, I don't like grills. <laughs> he likes Jack guys. Anyway, yeah. it was Jack. But uh, so, you know, like when I got in there, the Pauly D goes to that guy, Vinny. Yo, Vinny, look who's it is. Look who it is. It's your boy. Your boy's here. Because the guy Vinny used to read. You mean Rambling Freak. Other side. There freak. He goes. Rambling Freak. It was, I'm looking at my picture, so it's like the opposite. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So if I'm looking, look, there's something on my head. I'm, I'm thinking I can see off the yeah. side. I'm looking at, anyway, you know, it's like you're looking in a mirror, but it's not. Anyway, mm-hmm. so, uh, you know, so, so like we were doing the scenes and everything and they were like, my, my girlfriend's Mexican, you know? So like I, I had her little brother, my niece who I raised and my daughter who's on the phone over there, but, uh, mm-hmm. and, uh, they were doing like a Polly D's comes down. He's holding her hand, my daughter's hand and my niece's hand. He's like, okay, you're two greetettes. Let's make you a nice t-shirt. And then, uh, uh, my, my, uh, my, my bro, Jesus Christ. She don't turn. Hold on. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. That's good television when you see shit like this. Uh, so you know we're really doing this. Yeah. Ronnie's girlfriend was uh, Sammy Sweetheart. So That's it. Sammy Sweetheart. Somebody just told you that in your ear. Yes. Yes. Okay. George. <laughs> George. Lucia. Anyway. Lucia. Um, so uh, what was I going to say? It's like that fucking, like, uh, what's his name? Stella from Streetcar Named Desire. Um, mm-hmm. Anyway, so, you know, like, uh, so we would, you know, we would film in a show and stuff and I, he he goes, my uh, my girlfriend's brother's there, and he's swinging around a t-shirt. He goes, where's the Mexican kid? You know, because he got a shirt that says something like Viva Mexico or whatever fuck. And I said, he's out cutting the grass. You know oh, boy. And, and they had a cut. They were like, well, wait, shh, you can't say that. You can't say that because, like, you know, that sounds racist. I'm like, listen, it's not racist. I'm, it's, I'm here with him. He's with me. You know, I'm the one mm-hmm. who's not ready for that shirt. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I'm the one who's taking care of everything. You know, mm-hmm. he's he's my girlfriend's brother. He's like a, he's like my son to me. Mm-hmm. You know? So I was yeah. Talking. Anyway, yeah, that shit's all set up. Everything's set. Yeah. Up. Me- Another great one you did was the the uh, place Cupid by Simon uh, yes. Cowell. That's Simon Cowell. Yes, yeah, Simon Cowell had a show. That, er, if you can Google, you can Google. It's called Cupid. And what it was was these two chicks. These two chicks go to the big cities. They go to like Miami, New York, LA, and they might've gone to Vegas. I'm not sure, but I know that they went to those cities and they go around and they pick a guy from each city to be a finalist. Okay. To see who's going to date this one of the two girls. And the one, one of the two girls is like a fucking multimillionaire business owner. And what it is is she's like, she can't find a guy because mm-hmm. she's always out working and busting or not, you know, and so she doesn't have time to meet a guy. So this, the whole premise is this girl, her best friend is going to go around and find her, the guy of her dreams and okay. a guy that you know lives up to her standards. Now, mm-hmm. so Cupid calls me and they use me as a stand in, like, you know, like a, like not a stand in, what do you call it? A, 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 um, what do you call it, Joe? Like a, like a, like a, like a, Picked, yeah, like a well, they didn't want me. No, they like contestant. Want, like, what did they call like a contestant you know, like, or something? Whatever. Yeah, not, that's not the word I'm fucking thinking of. Uh, it, it it's like a oh god. Anyway, so let me tell the story. Fuck. So they, it, you know, I go there to. They didn't. I don't even know what I'm doing. They offered me to, you know, a couple hundred dollars. I said, okay, I'll do it. So I come down to do this show. I have no idea why I'm going. They, they told me to wear, you know, like cut off sleeves or short sleeves or something to show the cannons, you know? And I'm like, all right, I get down there and uh, a ringer. I was a ringer. That's what it means. A ringer, a ringer okay. is just like, you know, somebody says, you know, they already know what's going on. It's like, you're not, mm-hmm. you know, so I go down there and I, first thing I notice is a line down the fucking road and it's fucking pouring rain out and it's New York city. You know what I mean? And as soon as <laughs> I get there, they pull, you know, I don't have to stand on that line. They told me just come in. So I come in and the producers take me in the back. And, uh, you know, I first thing I had to do was take a piss and, you know, I take my dick down and shooting all over the place and his fucking piss is hitting my fucking, you know, I pissed a little bit on the fly because I had my pants down. Mm-hmm. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, the chick, it's a girl, she's putting it on, she's putting the fucking microphone and she's putting it up underneath my, you know, you put it up, they always go up your shirt, but mm-hmm. hey, I'm down and she goes, ooh. So wet, you were raining hard out there. And I said, Yeah. Meanwhile, that wasn't rain. It was, <laughs> was <your> piss. <laughs> Sorry, guys. It was like, oh, that's disgusting, Valentine. Anyway, 
So I go, we put on this thing, right? And I, I'm like, okay. And they're telling me, all right, Greg, listen, this is the deal. We want you to go in that room. You're going to walk in. It's going to be really dark. There's going to be a light on you and a light on her. Now, I think there was audience. I don't even know because I was like, you know, you can't see. You're in the fucking dark. Okay. Just a spotlight on me and mm -hmm. a spotlight on them too. And the girl's going to try to talk to you and interview you to see if you're worthy of dating her best friend. Okay. Now listen to me. They may say some crazy shit to you, whatever. Don't get obnoxious. Don't say if they say anything stupid, don't get crazy. Just you know, go with the flow. All right. Because your job is to try to win this girl over and get a date with her. You want to mm -hmm. be used to go on to the next level. So I walk in a room and the, it's all fucking dark. And as soon as I got under the light, the 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 best friend goes. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, hell no. Oh, oh, God, no. And the other girl goes like this. And the girl that's the date, you know, that I'm supposed to be trying to date, is like this. She puts her hand and she's like, and she's laughing. <laughs> and and I'm standing there and now I'm like, okay, I just got totally set up for this. You know, I'm a ringer. They, they needed a little crazy people to mix in with the, the real contestants, you know. And I'm like, you motherfucker. I'm thinking in my head, you motherfuckers, you set me up. So I'm standing there, and the girl goes, oh, hell no. No, Mr. Steroid. No, Mr. Steroid. Wow. My girlfriend, my girlfriend is not, is not going to date some juiced up. Look at you. I mean, you're, you're short. You're all fucking jacked, you know, built like this. And I'm sitting there like this, and I can't. And they're like, you know, do you have anything to say? And I'm saying, no, I would really like to date your friend. She's a nice girl. I, you know, I, I came here with the goodness of my, I had to say shit like that, you know, nothing wow. major like that, you know, and that's all that really came out of my mouth. And they ripped the fucking shit out of me. You're disgusting. Look at you. What are you supposed to do with you? She's, you know, it's your own. You're obviously steroided out. She doesn't need that. You know, you're way out of her league. All this shit. All right. And that was it. No way. Out. You're out like this. So mm -hmm. that, you know, I got to go out there and I get out and I'm like, you motherfuckers to the fucking, you know what I mean? Because I knew the producers got me and they put me in a, each, after each guy's done, they put you in a stair, like it's, there's a staircase really. And they interview. So what did you think? Do you think you have a shot? And I'm like, dude, I had no shot at all. Are you kidding me? They, I knew that they, as soon as they saw me, they started blasting me like you're short, you're fucking, what are you like? Look at the size of you. Like, that's disgusting. You know what I mean? Yeah. They mm -hmm. call me disgusting shit. So I'm like, ah, you know what? Fuck it. I'm all right anyway. And she wasn't my type anyway. That's what I said to them. I said, ah, she's not my type anyway. Which, dude, not for nothing. But she's not my type. She looks like mm -hmm. a combination of Schwarzenegger's wife and Courtney Cox. It's just, I don't know. <laughs> not, my, not my flavor, bro. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. so anyway, after the fucking show, they come out of the back. You know, we're done mm -hmm. filming, and I'm getting my clothes. I'm getting ready to go. And the girl comes over to me, the the friend, the one that was like ripping me ass. Mm -hmm. Hey, you want to go get a, some pizza? We're all going to go out and get some pizza. Oh, God. And I'm like, uh, are you fucking kidding me? You want me to come with you to go get pizza after what you guys <laughs> Yeah. And she goes, no, no, don't, don't worry about all that. That We had to do that. That's for the show. You, I'm sure you're a great guy. Come on, we'll all go out. We'll get some pizza. And the girl comes over to when, you know, the one that, you know, you're looking to date. She's like, yeah, come on, come with us. We'll have a good time. Come on. Uh, don't worry about that. That's the show. And I'm like, fuck that shit. You're going to be kidding. Yeah. Are you buying, by the way? If you're buying, I'm going. No, but, uh, <laughs> no, but uh, I was like, look at you motherfuckers. You made me look like a foot. Yeah, that's why I felt good about the piss on my hand. You know, on, 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 on not on my hand. Okay. But, um, you know, it, it, I was like, you motherfuckers set me up, you know? Yeah. I had no chance. And first of all, I didn't want, I didn't even know why I was going. In. I didn't even find out that the winner of the whole shebang gets a million dollars. And you got it, but you got to marry the girl too, I think. Oh, no, fuck that. No, you're not going to do that. No, um, it wasn't my type. So let's get back to the premiere tomorrow. One thing is, um, why did the Vice TV choose you? Is that because of your relationship with Arnold? Uh, uh, well, I do know Arnold, but that's not why they really I mean, you know, that helps. That helps. But the reason why they chose me is because they've used me before for other TV shows. Okay. You know what I mean? So therefore, Joe, I forget. I didn't even remember till you called me today that I'm going to doing this TV show. I forget. <laughs> I know. I was like, you know what I mean? I phone. forget all the TV shows I've done. I don't even remember. 
I swear mm -hmm. to God, I don't even remember. I mm -hmm. have to look at the list and shit. And it, that list hasn't been updated in 10 years. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. The one on my, my website. Yeah, the one on your website. Forget. I forget mm -hmm. all that shit, you know? So it's, yeah. it's... In the trailer, you talk about Arnold and his brother. Right, it's a big clip that they show on TV right now. So you, Arnold. So, what was that story? If you can tell about that story. Well, you know what it is. Arnold's brother. <clears throat> I always forget his name. Ger Gerhardt, Reinhardt, whatever, something like that. You know, <clears throat> Malhart. <throat> no, but it, I think it was. <laughs> I think it might have been Reinhardt. I'm not sure. <clears throat> and uh, what happened was, oh, but anyway, um, what happened was his brother was was like one of these guys that chicks always liked was die, you know, was the main guy like in high school who would have been the equivalent mm -hmm. the court football quarterback. He was a soccer player and he was good at all kinds of sports. Everything he did he was good at. Whereas Arnold really was like in his shadow, was the weaker one of the two. And his father used to like reward that shit. Like, hey, you want dessert? Kick your brother's ass. Whoever gets fucking gets their ass, you know, whoever kicks this one's ass the winner gets a fucking dessert. The loser, oh, well, go home and maybe, you know, go back, go to bed and maybe tomorrow you'll, you'll be the one to get dessert. You know, you know something like that. But he would never wow. win. Ar wow. you know, uh, uh, Arnold didn't even want to fight. His brother, his brother could kick his ass at will. And his brother was good at everything. And his wow. father used to kind of like, you know, he kind of showed favoritism towards that brother. You know what I'm saying? Because that brother, I think Arnold was more mama's boy. And, mm -hmm. and, um, and the brother who was like, you know, the big shit, um, big man on campus, BMOC, big man on campus, you know, and, uh, you know, chicks liked him. He did every, you know, and he wound up dying in a car crash, but, and, uh, he had an infant and, and Arnold helped, you know, take care of the infant, you know, throughout his life. You know, he would, you know, you know, uh, uh, people know that story already, but, yeah. you know, Arnold's was, talked about that. Arnold's talked about his brother, you yeah. know, and, and says things about him like that, you know, um, a couple other shows that you were on. You were on uh, Tyra Banks. Yes. Yep. And she loved on... you. She loved you? Yeah. If you I see the video, she keeps you. feeling me up like this. She keeps grabbing my chest. And she even told me, boy, you got it going on. That's what she said. Exactly. Really? Um, really? She was very good to me. Um, but, you know, it's funny. Her own staff used to talk. She, I was sitting in the fucking, you know, like you're, I'm in the green room. And uh, one of the girls comes in, she's smoking a cigarette, and she's talking to one, another one of the girls, right? They're plopping their ass in the green room because there's food and everything in there. And uh, she's talking. She's like, fuck her. Fuck her. You know, I'm sick of her. She's such a bitch. Meanwhile, her, uh, her, the, the producer of her show is sitting right there. You know what I mean? And I'm like, wow. holy shit. You guys are talking shit. You know? And they, they told me they all, get, they all get fired and they go work for, like, you know, one was with, like, Oprah Winfrey. You know what I mean? And, and, and then mm -hmm. Dr. Phil. And now she's with, you know, now here she was with, uh, you know, Tyra Banks. Uh, Tyra so Banks. Really bounced back and forth uh, like that. They work different shows and everything. And, you mm -hmm. know, so, but Jay Leno, who I did out there. Jay was, Leno, yeah, that was famous. Um, and I wore his jacket. And I, we set that up. It was a skit. That okay. We, I wore his running jacket, you know, is a jacket like this, but doesn't have a hood. You know, regular, you know, what do you call it? A track jacket or whatever. Like a hoodie, yeah. Yeah, like a, yeah, but it wasn't a hoodie. It was a, it's it's like a zip up. Yeah, zip yeah, like you know, like uh, what wise guys wear. You know what yep. I'm saying? Mm -hmm. yep. And then uh, you know that was his jacket that I wore, his personal jacket. He was so good to me. These other shows, you get paid. So, you know, first of all, when you see celebrities on there, they don't get paid to do those shows, okay? Because what they're usually on there to promote. I got a new movie that we're coming out, or I got a book that's coming out, or whatever. And that's to produce. That's to promote something. They don't just come on there. For this shit and giggles of it okay mm -hmm. so you don't really get paid much to do those shows on his show i got paid like 1200 1250 something like that it was a lot of money plus he put me up in a fucking badass hotel and he was so good to me he bought me a steak dinner bro i'm telling you, he was a great guy nobody could ever talk wow. shit about jay leno to me he was great wow. to me and wow. kevin wow. banks his um the drummer, or guitarist. His guitarist. drummer, uh, not excuse me. His, his guitarist, guitarist player guitarist, was the yeah. leader of his band. Was also a bodybuilding fan, so the Ramon Freak, Ramon right Freak, there. So he, uh, he, he, uh, he used to read my column and shit. So he asked, "Let me get, let's get a picture taken." So I was like, "Holy shit, of course!" So we got a picture taken. I could send you that if you ever want to. Yeah, stick, I'm gonna know. put that in there. Yeah, that's really cool. You yeah. know, so uh, Kevin Eubanks, uh, you know, I, I met him there, and it, I just had a great. Jay Leno was great. I loved that guy. He was great. You know, I what was, about Carson Daly? 
Carson Daly was phenomenal. It was phenomenal. Didn't pay a lot. Uh, I think I got, well, I, I think I had about four or five, six hundred bucks from it. I don't remember. You're talking like 2003. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I can't remember what I did yesterday. He did. He didn't. He didn't pay me back. But he's a crazy motherfucker because I've been. On, I was on Howard Stern once, mm-hmm. and I was on. I was on. Uh, what's it? Carson Daly, and you know Howard Stern back in those days was like, you know, here, pull my finger. You know what I mean? Yep. And he was crazy like that. You know, mm-hmm. look. Let me see your tits. Come on, show me your tits. Yeah, that's so not that's how he is today. Howard Stern, right? But you know, mm-hmm. you, would see, you would see like what's his name, uh, uh, uh. Carson Daly, he'd be like talking like, you know, in a microphone, yeah, we're here with Britney Spears. So Britney, tell me, you know, he was very, but when the camera was off, their personalities were the opposite. Howard Stone was very quiet. Hey, how you doing? Yeah, what's up? You know, whereas fucking, whereas fucking, uh, Daly. What's the name? oh my God, uh, you know, Carson Daly was fucking crazy. He was the kind of guy I could hang out with him. He was, he was like, pull my finger. You know, he was mm-hmm. nuts. He was a good time guy. First, he was fucking tall as hell, but he was yeah. a good time. Everybody's tall next to me. He's a good time guy. He he just was like a fucking fun guy. He loved me. He told me I got the biggest um, ovation. It was me, I think, at Britney Spears. I got the two biggest ever ovations ever on his show. Wow. And he said, Anytime you want to come. I was fucking with the audience. You ever watch the whole show? He brings out a stack of pancakes and he says to me, mm-hmm. This is, uh, 27 inches and there's a stack of pancakes in my arms and shit, right? And he said, so your arms are this size, this size of a stack of pancakes. And I took it, they were fucking actually like, like kind of frozen. They were frozen pancakes. But I took one, I bit it and he, and I was like, and, and then I fucking flung it to the audience and then I was like, <laughs> went into the audience. And he was like, he loved it. It's on the fucking watch. And then he was talking to me. <clears throat> he said, did you ever look Look at your arms and go, holy shit. You know what I mean? Like that. And I mm-hmm. said, oh, I sometimes I look down and I say, I look at my freaking piece of the God down there and I said, holy shit. I thought my arms were big. <laughs> and he loved it. That's on the show. <clears throat> and then, you know, that's where he, we were saying funky shit back and forth mm-hmm. to each other, me and him. And then he's like, well, can you go to, uh, you know, you know what, what else can you do to like a gathering? And I said, dude, I could hit a 90 mile an hour festival. That's why. Um, what's his Chris name? Bell. Bell had me on when when I was in a bigger, stronger, faster. He took that scene and then put me in a fucking batting cage. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So it was, it was it was really you know Carson Daly was great, bro. When we were back, he was in the green room hanging out with me. Wow. You know, and we were with Jim Curry, the tennis player, and there was this famous rock band there. Fuck me, wait, well, I'll tell you the name. It was it. Was it Papa Roach or something like that? You ever heard Papa Roach? One yes, of them, I did. One I of the heavy like metal bands, and they were there. Mm-hmm. They were all like fucking kicking it with me, and they were like, "Oh shit, we need to put you on an album." And all, you know, we mm-hmm. were. I was with Jim Curry, a tennis fucking player, and mm-hmm. we were having fun. You know, we're throwing shit at each other. Carson Daly was like a giant child. I, I fucking, I was like, <laughs> we can hang out, you know? No, really. Yeah. Now, Steve Harvey also asked you to come on, right? Steve Harvey asked me. Steve Harvey asked me to come on. I can't say because I keep seeing the thing in my f- I'm trying to go like this. Wrong. Steve Harvey asked me to come on. Okay. And so did uh, Jimmy Kimmel. Now, Jimmy Kimmel used to have this guy, Adam, call me. I thought it was Adam Carolla, but it was this dude. The guy was like a cokehead. I said, dude, you want to, you could come, you know, but they, the problem is they didn't want to pay for me to fly out there. They would put wow. me up. <clears throat> would put me up in a hotel, but they didn't want to pay for me to fly out there. They wanted me to, I mean, uh, they didn't want to pay for me. They wanted me to fly myself out there. And I said, I'm, I can't do that. You know what I mean? No. You know, yeah, what, you know what I'm saying? And I don't even know if they were going to give me any Chicago. We didn't get that far. And then when I was out there with, with Snooki and shit, um, I was with these agents and one of the agents goes to well, Greg, you want to be on a uh, Jimmy Kimmel? Cause he want, you know, he said he'd have you on tonight. Mm-hmm. They just canceled one of the, one of their people canceled. I was like, all right, I'll do it. And then, uh, you know, because I'm already out there now, you yeah. know. Mm-hmm. And then uh, he called back like a half hour. We're, on, we're literally on our way to that f- to the st- sound stage where he is. And uh, they're mm-hmm. like, now, nah, you know what? We've The person called back and now they're going to do it. So, you know, whatever. But so uh, Kimmel and Harvey did not want to pay me. Um, uh, what was was an adult, swim, adult Swim. Adult Swim. Well, well, package. You know what's funny? Before I get to the adult swim, I did a fucking, I told you this, it's the craziest thing. I was super jacked. This was like 1999, maybe, maybe the beginning of 2000. It was summertime. I was so fucking big. I was like 278 pounds. I was like, <clears> fucking, 
huge. Yeah, right? You were huge. And I was I was down in New York City. I was in Times Square, and me, you know, me and the old, me, and, me and my wife were already like divorced. You know, we were like separated. Mm -hmm. You know, <clears throat> COVID. But um, COVID. Corona. Anyway, so uh, <laughs> we got to watch what we say. They picked that up. Uh, <laughs> Okay. You do a fair. I don't. Huh? Anyway, they don't. They won't pick it up. But be careful, because you know we we don't want them to fucking put the kibosh to the show. But so listen, I'm down there, and I'm wheeling my daughter, who's like two years old. She's in a fucking little stroll, and I'm pushing her right. Fucking, I was big everywhere. I had a black, you know, like cut off shirt, tank top thing on. Mm -hmm. and I'm fucking walking, and it was they were filming a music video. Now mm -hmm. I wish I, I'm so bad, Joe. You you know me already. Yeah, so, I know. People don't know me. They don't know how I am like that, but I forget. I don't remember anybody. I could, I could, fucking, I could be with fucking, uh, you know, the most famous person. I could be Taylor Swift, and I'd be like, I don't know, I don't know what's her name. I don't remember. Anyway, mm -hmm. I'm in a fucking thing. I'm walking in a in a producer see me, and then the fucking people about it. They're sitting in a fucking big convertible like Hummer, and there's all chicks in bikinis and shit, and they all see me. I'm like, yo, we gotta get this guy in the video. We gotta get this guy in the video. So now my ex wife's like, Are you fucking kidding me? We're here with the kids, and you got to be fucking around. And I said, they're going to fuck. Come on. It's going to take, what, about a half hour? It's no big deal. They're just going to drive down. we got to drive down the street in this harbor, and we're, music's blasting, whatever the rap song was, you know. And she's like, you know, my son's like, dad, dad, do it, do it, do it, do it. You know what I mean? So, you know, the ex-wife was giving me a hard time, and I'm like, well, mm -hmm. no, doing it. You know, we're already fucking getting doors, so what the fuck? You know, I'm not listening mm -hmm. to this shit anyway. Mm -hmm. But um, so she was like, all right, whatever. You know, because my son was pushing. So I jump in there and I'm in the fucking car and I'm in there fucking flexing and shit. And the chicks are hanging out my arms. And, and it was a rap video, right? It was the rap, rap, rap video. Yeah, they're all like, hey, well, so I don't know, gold teeth and shit, you know. And, I, <laughs> and they're doing this shit, pointing at my arms, flicking money, drinking fucking bubbly and shit. And I, I don't know, I was just doing this shit and I'm fucking like acting all. And I don't even, I can't even remember the fucking camera. I don't even remember it. You know, I just remember the ex the ex-wife was not happy with that, you know. But uh <laughs> so I've done a lot of shit. You already noticed I've done a lot of shit that I don't even remember. Like yep. I did the adult swim. Now we can't put the clip, you know that I'll send you clips. You you yeah. you're it up and you know who it's Derek Derek Beckles and stuff. You mm -hmm. guys can look that up, Derek Beckles. Anybody wants to Google that shit. But you know, so we're sitting there and um you know, I, I was doing crazy shit with them. Bro, that's a, that Derek Beckles is a crazy man. Let me tell you something. He's crazy. He was my kind of guy, bro. We had a lot of fun mm -hmm. uh, on that set. And it was like, we were all maniacs. But I was the fitness guru. And um, Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, I was with this guy, very famous guy, who started all that. Uh, -na 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 -na, you know, started all that Entertainment Tonight shit. Oh my God, I forgot his name. He's got glasses and he kept talking about Schwarzenegger and Mela, you know, like, no, oh, really? I've been friends for years and uh, I forgot his name. It's a very famous guy. I'll have to, maybe we'll, yeah, yeah, have to find it in, we'll stick it in. I'll send you a friggin' picture mm -hmm. and everything. But we did crazy stuff and I was their fitness guru on that show. So it, the name of the show was called Hot Package. Package. You Google it. Joe Google it. We know it's a, it's on a, a, mm -hmm. it's on a Wikipedia. It was Hot Package. People don't know. I've done that's nothing. I've done a million uh a magazines, million ESPN. ESPN. Oh my god. I, I'm the one that got John Romano and uh, George. I'm the one that got them the shot with uh with what's his name there? Fucking uh um the, you know where they did that uh that TV show. They did a show with um oh god, come on, Greg. What the frick is his name? Um Miguel Sancho for uh Anyway, I got them. They, they wanted me to do the show, but I was doing an ESPN show, so I couldn't do the same show. Um, so I told them, you know, do, you guys do it. I, oh, okay. I said all these fucking, I'm bad with that. Like, it doesn't mean mm -hmm. anything. Like, uh, you know, I'm, I don't, I'm not a bragger. I don't put that shit all over the place. Yeah. And stuff, you know? You're in every magazine, from Flex Magazine. Oh, yeah. Oh, Muscle Sport Magazine. I mean, every. I mean, you're in every magazine. Oh, yeah. I mean, if you go to my room, you see the, the ones, the pictures in the wall where I'm dressed like Popeye. That yes. was a centerfold for... Uh, for uh, that wasn't men's fitness, that was a H and M. Uh, a, 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 a no, yeah, H and M. No, that's a store. What was the name? Store. I said, What's the name of the <laughs> Very famous movie, uh, very famous store. Oh, I mean, a store, Jesus, Mary Joseph, very famous mm -hmm. magazine. Uh, F -H -M. Magazine? FHM, FHM, you remember that FHM. movie? FHM. And then, um, that's I was also in a centerfold, I was in, you know, like all those magazines, stuff, <laughs> FHM. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, for him magazine. That's what it stands for. I was in, you know, fit uh, men's fitness magazine times. But mm -hmm. um, 
you know, I did the thing with Vita Guerrera, uh, Vita Guerra, and, and um, Isaac from Love Boat. Remember Love Isaac Boat? from Love Boat? Yes, we did Isaac it. from Love Boat. Suppose if you go, Joe, I don't even know if you remember when you were in my room in the house, you see that there's me, Vita Guerrera, who had the best ass on the planet at one time. Uh, she, uh, uh, um, uh, what the hell's the name? Um, Isaac from Love Boat, and then it was another guy, I forgot his name, he's like an eating champion. You know, he was eating hot dog, but there's a big poster of so we were named the people of 2004. You know, oh, wow. And uh, so I did that. I did so much shit, you know, like the yeah. magazines. Like, I was on the cover of Beverage World magazine. I went to fucking uh, Pepsi and they had this giant pile, a giant pile of like um, of, uh, of sodas. Uh, then I, it was all glued together. It was fake. And yeah. it was filled with, uh, And they had my arm like this holding up a fucking man like this. I, I'm like this, right? you guys can't see. What the fuck, Greg? Like this, mm -hmm. you know, a soda in my hand. You can't see me. I'm in the pile. Mm -hmm. And all you saw was this big fat arm of mine like this, holding up this fucking soda like this, a Pepsi. So yeah. I was on a cover of that. I've been on a cover of a lot of magazines. I told you, Bizarre Magazine, you know. Bizarre Magazine, yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. right. So National, many magazines. National Enquirer a bunch of times. And the inside cover, uh, the back mm -hmm. cover. Uh, I've been in there a couple times, you know. But you're going to ask me about that right now. Which I'm right. gonna. Ask. Why were you in national? Well, okay. Here's a story. <laughs> I was in the National Choir originally for, um, you know, for uh, 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 like. Sent off. You know, <laughs> these arms, you know, a, a father, this dad. I don't even know how they got the story, but this father <clears throat> breaks the world record with biggest arms and you know all this bullshit, right? Mm -hmm. But then, so again, like I said, once you do something once. They have your name or whatever they say. Hey, we need a guy with big arms or built or whatever. Or there's a story. They call you. So they, they actually, this time, they, uh, uh, they called me, but Bob Bonham had talked to them first. Okay. They were asking me about this girl. I shouldn't say her name here because, they, you know, we don't want any kind of like lawsuit slander shit. Yeah. You know? Even though it's in, you know, she's not famous, guys, but the, but her name is, it's it's in the National Choir. Mm -hmm. Famous case. She was a producer. She mm -hmm. was a producer for Maury Povich. Okay. Yes, Mr. Maury Povich. But what happened was they they called me. I told talk to Bob. Then they talked to Bob. Bob tells them all this shit about me with her. And then they call me. They're like, dude, you gotta tell me the story. You gotta tell me the story about this producer girl. And I said, Yeah, I know her really, really well. You know, we've hung out and stuff like that. And we, you know, we used to go out to eat and shit, me, Bob, her, and another girl. And, you know, she would be grabbing the visually God, you know, and she, cause she'd get like, Oof, like this, like, mm -hmm. stuff, like this. And you'd be like, she'd be like, look at my tits. They look good. You know, and she'd pop them out and stuff. You know, like, <laughs> you no, know she never did anything with her, but not, no, because that's not my type. You know, my type. I like, I, know, I, I like skinny girls, little, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? I don't like it. You know, she was a big Amazon chick, you know, big fucking, <laughs> big, you know, dead fucking round ass. And she had, that's, that's not me. Anyway. We're just friends, you know. We're all friends. Mm -hmm. She would get mm -hmm. drunk, she'd get crazy. When she's drunk, bro, she'd blow you under the table, and mm -hmm. she, she's nuts, you know. Mm -hmm. So we're we're you know. So now she's uh, she's accusing Maury Povich of sexual harassment. Yeah. Know? Okay. So now they come to me and they're asking me. Yeah, Bob Bonham said, "Ba ba 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 ba." And I said, "Listen, she's a nice girl, but you know, she's." Gets a couple of drinks in her. She's crazy. And they say, yeah, but did you ever do anything with her? I said, no, nah, I never did anything with her. But, you know, would she ever do any crazy shit like pop her boobs out? You know, because Bob Town or ask Greg. He did, you know, meanwhile, I'm the fucking idiot. That's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. She popped her boobs. You know, and she would <laughs> you know, grab your piece you got under the table. <clears throat> All right. So I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. You know, she did shit like that. So they print this article. Okay. Oh, and, boy. You know, this producer is a fucking, you know, she's a whore. Mm -hmm. All this other shit, right? Mm -hmm. Wild girl go, hangs out with that bodybuilder guy, the guy with the biggest arm, all this bullshit, right? So I'm reading the article. It's in the National Enquirer. It's a big fucking story. And I'm like, and sure enough, you know, she's freaking out. Everybody's freaking out. Her and Maury are going at, they used that article. Her, uh, Povich's lawyers used that article against her to say, see, this girl's a fucking, you know, a, a prostitute. She, you know, mm -hmm. she's not a prostitute. She's, a, she's a good time girl. But this girl's like a good time girl. And she's blaming him 
Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, she's got a bad track record, you know. And Maury won the case, and that article really helped. So now, now you were going to be on Maury. Fast forward, yes. about two, three years later, Maury Povich calls me. I want you on the show. Biggest arms, bull the bullshit with the fucking bodybuilding. Biggest arms, steroids, steroids. Because I tell the truth, right? So I go on there, you know, and uh, Maury comes in. We're going to talk about this. We're going to talk about that. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. Now, but you got to go in the studio over here. We're going to film you. We're going to do a little pre, you know, because they always do this little mini little pre-talk. And then, they, then you come out. Come you out on stage. Mm-hmm. So now I'm sitting. I bring my daughter with me. Fucking Ludacris comes in the studio and shit oh. like that. You can see Ludacris walk through. So I'm sitting in there. And I'm doing a little pre-show film, right? And a girl's like asking me questions. So when you broke the record, uh, you know something? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hold on for a second. So it's stopped the film. You look really familiar to me. And I'm going, well, you know, I've been on the TV. Maybe you saw me on another show. You know, and then she goes, no, 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 no. Stop that. And she's going, I can't put my fucking finger on it. She's going, I know you from somewhere. I know you. And it, it's something that uh, I have to, f- what is it? What, 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 what do you, do, do, do you know somebody from here? And I said, oh shit, you're talking about the blah, 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 blah. Yep. Mm-hmm. I said, producer's name, right? I said, yeah. And she goes, that's where I know you from. Oh my God. You're that guy. You're the guy that did the article. She goes, <gasps> listen, thank you for the article. You helped Maury out. She goes, but we can't put you on. I said, yeah. why not? I said, I'm already here. You're already filming. She goes, we're going to pay you everything. And they paid me lovely, by the way. She goes, well, we can't put you on. She goes, if I if we put you on, it's going to look like it's a thank you for you. Like, oh, look, now you're rewarding this guy. Correct. Yeah. On for, 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 you know, throwing that girl under the bus and helping Maury out. Mm-hmm. So she goes, thank you from the bottom of my heart because you saved all of our asses, all of our jobs. But I can't. We can't put you on. Wow. Uh, you know, they paid me, you know what I mean? I, they say, you want to sit in the audience? I said, no, nah, I'm not doing it. I'm going home. I got my daughter. My daughter was like nine years old, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but that was, that was, so crazy shit follows mm-hmm. me. You know, if you yeah. know my daughter, she'll take crazy shit follows me. There was another story that, uh, that I saw, apparently, you dated Snooki. Now, what happened yeah, with that? I never date. What happened is I never dated her. That was all over the place. And that was there was actually film and everything like that. They were saying yes. it on the news. And I was on page six. Yes. She was on your lap. Saying that me lap. and Snooki were having an affair and shit like that. Yes. None of that's true. None of it. What happened is Snooki was dating my close friend who's like a little brother to me. Mm, okay. His name is Emilio Masella. Okay, maybe okay. Oh, shit. I hope it doesn't get mad. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Everybody knows anyway, because he was on the first episode. That they would show. Okay. He's the one who bought her the alligator that she slept yep. with. Mm-hmm. Matter of fact, some people thought that that might have been his uh, his kid, the first kid that she had. His name was Emilio Masella. Now, he's now a cop in uh, in Connecticut, but it was his girlfriend. Snooki was his girlfriend, and they mm-hmm. broke up. Okay? And it's really cool, because she used to give him, when he would go to, like, he would, uh, you know, go to bed and shit like that. He would leave these little business cards, right? Said, this is like a coupon. This is good for one blowjob. This is good for a hand job. This is good for like an anal fucking, you know, anal Whatever. So he would take the card and I go, ha, you gave me that card. So now today I'm going to use that card tonight. We're gonna, you, know, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Anyway, so she would do this. So she was, and she was actually a really good girl. Okay. Yeah. I, I know her. Dude, there's pictures. First of all, I'm five, six. And when I, I was like this, when my hands on my on my knees bent over and I kissed her this way. So she's got, I'm telling you something. My ex-wife was small. My ex-wife was like 4'11", 5'8". Mm-hmm. She was smaller than that. She's like 4'9", 4'10". Four, four at the Wow, moment. she's tiny. She's tiny. Fucking, she's tiny. I mean, dude, I felt like fucking... Rolf Muller next to her. You know what I mean? I was, I was like, I was like fucking, I was like this much bigger than her. And, um, <coughs> she was, she was a really, really good girl though. Mm-hmm. Now, listen, how come when you watch those shows, you see her, uh, um, all like, you know, crazy shit happening, falling down drunk, but you never hear about that. Oh, she got arrested, but you never see that in real life. It never happened because that's all set up. She's a really good girl. 
and she's a nice girl. But there was videos of me and her. We were out in L.A. together, and you know, we were hanging out and we're chilling. Mm-hmm. And just hanging out, we're friends, you know. And yep. you, know, we're, you know, she's kissing me, but we're playing around for, for my friend Emilio. And she mm-hmm. was basically crying on my shoulder about him. And every they took it like the fucking paparazzi took it like me and her are dating. And, all, and yep. none of it, none of mm-hmm. it was true. I was already with my girlfriend here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, they showed those that like as you were, as were dating. And, and she was on your lap. You know what's – yeah, she was sitting on my lap. I got a million pictures of me and me and Snooki together. I'll even give you some videos. I got her talking like, Gina Valentino, listen to your freaking father. You know, like talking to my daughter. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And, I, cause, and she's like, Gina, I'm coming over your house with your father. We're going to boof your hair. I'll send you the videos. You can stick them in here if you yeah. want. Mm-hmm. So um, anyway, so uh, it's funny because that is actually how we got in. That happened first, right? And then when we were in Seaside Heights – she was walking down the boardwalk with that other chick. I forgot her name. It's, it's, it's another girl, a new one, it's a short one. And uh, <clears throat> I did a did me and Joe Pietaro uh, did some. I'll, I'll talk about that in a second of a podcast. Me and Joe Pietaro, bigger. It was we were the original Joe Rogan. Uh, we'll get mm-hmm. into that in a second. Okay. We're walking, she's walking down, and I see Snooky right, and there's all fucking cameras and shit, and there's people, a thousand people following her, but you can't see because they're, they're on the side, and they, you know. The cameras are following her walking down the boardwalk and see something mm-hmm. like, down there. And she's coming right the fuck at me, right? So mm-hmm. I go like this. There's a pole, right? So I jump behind the pole. My daughter's like, why are you hiding behind the pole? Stop it. Get over there. I want you to go talk to her right now with me right there. You know, she wanted me to bring, you know, her over to Snooky. And I could do their filming. And I don't want her to see me. Because then, you know, it looks like I'm like with all these fucking fanboys and girls, right? Running yeah, around. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I'm hiding. So, so what happened was after Snooky passed, she goes down. There's a ramp that goes straight down, and there the house is right here, right? And it's right next to the there's a ramp right next to the house. Mm-hmm. She's going into the house, right? And they're they're at the bottom of the ramp now, and they're filming up. And if you look at the top, you just see me and my daughter arguing because my daughter's like, Good daughter, and you go tell her. <laughs> When I was like fucking 12 years old or 11, something like that, you know? <laughs> and I'm like, no, I'm not fucking going down there. Fuck that with all these fucking people. They're all like fanboys and shit. She's going to think, you know, what are you in with these people? Come on, you know? Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden, they were filming in the store that was right there. Okay? Right down a little bit further. And and uh, and uh, this, the producer sees me, comes out and goes, I know you. You're, you're the guy. You're friends with Snooki and isn't it? I said, yes. I said, please. You know, my daughter's fucking going crazy over here. Can you do something? She goes, yes, come on. We're going to get you in. The, we're going to get you in. The, and that completely made my daughter's night. Because when she saw Paulie D, Paulie D's holding my daughter's hand. Mm-hmm. 12 years old, you know, the kids from school. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And, shit, and he makes her a t-shirt. And says, mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. I was her fucking hero then. But before that, I was in serious <laughs> trouble. <laughs> funny. Yeah, talk about Joe now. Joe, Prote- um, you and Joe. Oh, podcast Joe, Joe and I had a podcast. We did it for Steve Blackman. Okay. okay. And this was like in 2008, maybe or something like this, seven, whatever it was. And we had so many famous people on that podcast. You, I'll give it a commercial. That's just some of the people that we had on. Mm-hmm. We had on Donny Osmond, fucking, uh, what's his name? That my girlfriend fucking loved, my ex-girlfriend loved him too. Um, uh, Mario Lopez. Fucking, Mario Lopez, I mean, yeah. we had on uh, all the, fuck. we had Drita from Mob Wives. We had fucking mm-hmm. uh, Big Ange. Big Ange is like, come over my house. We're, I'm making you meatballs and meatballs and gravy. <laughs> you know what I mean? We got, all, mm-hmm. we had every, I can't even tell you, the, the, the lead singers from fucking, dude, we had, we had sports out, Jim Kelly, fucking the quarterback, you know, legendary yep. quarterback in the Buffalo the Bills. We yep. had fucking, um, we had Ernie Banks on, one of the greatest wow. shortstop baseball, Hall of Fame baseball player. We had Lou Pinella, you know, from wow. the Yankees on, uh, and everything. But the funniest thing was, uh, what's his name? Ernie Banks was talking to us and telling us how he always wanted to play for the Yankees. Meanwhile, he's Mr. Cub. They have a statue of him outside fucking, you know, Wrigley wow. Imagine and, um, him a Yankee. Wow, that would be amazing. Yeah, oh, dude. Oh, uh, you, you have no idea because I'm, you know, me with baseball. Yeah, you're, you're a Yankee, Yankee fan like me, yeah. But um, I'm going to tell you, let's see. Uh, I can't even remember all the people. I mean, my God, the people that we had on that show. Mm-hmm. Super duper celebrities. We had, I mean, we had everybody on that show. And, and, and 
we were doing that shit way before Joe Rogan. It was a podcast. But see, the reason why it stopped was because Steve Blackman didn't like it because we were getting celebrities, but not ba- not bodybuilders. bodybuilders. I swear to God, he was like, yeah, I, you know, I don't care, Donnie. Yeah. You don't care. You know what I mean? We had, I mean, we had, uh, oh my, I can't, I'm bad. We, you know, Boss yeah. Rutten, we had all these MMA fighters. Oh, Boss Rutten, yeah, yeah. We had on fucking. Did um, he tell you Kevin James was a really good fighter? Yeah, he told me Kevin James is a legit badass. He said he could he could probably, if, if he trained a little more, he could fight in the UFC. He told me that. Wow. Um, wow. He also told us a great story about how, uh, you know, he was driving on the road and some guy fucking was cutting him off and told him, pull over, pull over, right? Oh, that's a and boss is like, okay. And he pulled over and he said, the guy gets out of the car and he's like fucking, you know, moving like he knows martial arts. And then the guy sees it and he goes, you're boss rooting. And the guy goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. boss rooting tells him, yeah, yeah, I'm boss rooting. He goes, so now you still want to fight? He goes, do you still want to fight me? And, and the guy goes, please, I, I didn't mean it. And he goes, you didn't mean it, right? You didn't mean it because I'm boss rooting and you know what I'll do to you, right? You know how bad mm-hmm. I can hurt you. He goes, you know what? You should think twice before you do stuff like that. He goes, because only an asshole pulls people over and challenges them to a fight. I should make you fight me right now. He said, please, I don't want to fight. Wow. You know I mean? Like, because, you know, boss rooting, dude, not for nothing, you know? Oh, he was great. We, we interviewed Frank Shamrock, who fought him. I mean, we interviewed, dude, like, I can't even tell you the rock stars we fucking, I mean, mm-hmm. we had, I mean, the lead singer for, uh, uh, Iron Maiden, the the fucking, I mean, even old rocks. It's like fucking, we're an American band. The Grand Funk. We had Ian uh, uh, Ian Anderson on from uh, you know Jethro Tull. He's the, he is Jethro Tull. Everybody thinks mm-hmm. he's Jethro Tull. You know, these are seventies bands. Some of these people mm-hmm. like, who the fuck is that? You know mm-hmm. what I mean? But we had legends. Fucking, we I can't even tell the sports legends, the football players, the MMA fighters, the fuck. You know, we had everybody like super celebrities, movie stars. I'm really Who glad. would get them? Who would get them? Would it be Joe? Black? Joe would get Joe? them. Joe yeah, Joe's get professional. Them. You know, I'm, I'm a fucking Momo. I don't know how to do that. Thing, right? <laughs> but I well, was Joe fucking would Mario Lopez and fucking, what's her name there? The fucking, uh, uh, Hannah Montana. What the hell's her name? Hannah Montana there. Oh, fucking, Hannah Montana. Uh, what's her name? Um, her father is that. George, I know you're watching this. What's Hannah Montana's name? Um, uh, there, uh, uh, her father's, uh, my achy, breaky heart. Achy heart. Yeah, what's his name? What achy, his breaky fun? heart guy. What's his name? Oh, God, I forget, too. She's very famous. You know her. She... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking yes. about. Miley Cyrus. Miley Cyrus. Miley Cyrus. I was trying to get her and fucking, what's his name, hooked up. It was fucking crazy, bro. We had mm. so much fun on that podcast. But Steve's like, I don't know. He's like, you're not getting, <clears throat> I want to, you know, he wanted us to get like, you know, Ronnie Coleman. I'm like, I mean, Ronnie Coleman's great. Easy. Ronnie Coleman's the best, man. You know, I mean, I love Ronnie. He's a fucking yeah. great guy. I've had dinner with him a gazillion times. And he, I, mean, I talked to Ronnie, and he loves you. He's like, oh, Greg, we go way back. That, yeah, we go way back. I heard him. He's a good guy. Dude, let me tell you, he's a great guy. Nobody can say shit to me about Ronnie Coleman. But people don't, like, the average person, you can't compare fucking Mario Lopez. Donnie Osmond's a fucking legend, no matter what, you know, and like, these are people like high up, you know, and back then that's when the mob wives were like fucking like top show. Yeah, and, yeah. Mm-hmm. and we had big Ange who was like a badass on that show. We had all of them. We had all yeah, of them. Yeah. I don't even remember all their names. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, but you know, and, and, and Drita, Drita's dude, I'm going to give you, I'll put you, I'll give it a little commercial clip that we made and you'll hear mm-hmm. Drita, like, you better, you know, you, you, you know, you better listen to Greg and Joe or else I'll, you know, like, she's mm-hmm. like, I'll fuck you up. We had less, dude, Les Stroud. Les Stroud. I used to love that. I love Les, Les Stroud, bro. You know, he goes out in the wilderness, unlike that other fucking Momo that goes in a hotel and shit. He, Bear he, grills. Told me, he told me, bro, I asked him about Bigfoot. And he goes, look, I don't know. I don't know if Bigfoot exists or not. But he said, there is shit out in that woods. He goes, that you, you don't know what the fuck it is. You know, like, he's like, I would hear things at night and big thumbs, like, you know, like, you're like, like. You know, mm-hmm. like there's a fucking dinosaur or something out there. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and he did tell me that okay. he had to spend the whole night up in a fucking tree because a moose tried to kill him. Uh, you know, bears fucking. He has like parasites in the roof of his mouth because he's fucking drinking like rotten water and eating like fucking foods Ugh. that would kill you and shit like that. Les Stroud's a fucking great guy. Um, you know, that's for you people that don't know who I'm talking about, that survivor man. He show now, I think, on one of them channels. Um, uh, who else? I mean, we had a lot. Artie Lang, community. Artie, oh, Artie Lang, he's great. We had on Artie. all these fucking guys, you know, the Reverend, whatever the fuck his name is. Bob Levy. 
Bob Lear, yeah, Bob Levy, Bob yeah. Levy yes. Um, yes. Bob, Reverend Bob Levy, I'm coming to you out. You have to hear the fucking shit that these guys were talking. Dude, we had Eddie Money on. Eddie Money was so fucking lit when we were talking to him. He was like, uh, so was fucking Artie Lang, not for nothing. Um, <laughs> yeah, he was in trouble. We had for a while, Jim but... Florentine, fucking. Uh, uh, we had all. I mean, I had so many fucking top comedians and shit. How about Nick DiPaolo? Who? Nick DiPaolo. Did you have him on? Nick no, DiPaolo? I grew up with a guy named Nick DiPaolo. It's like, I'm like, who? Nick DiPaolo. Oh, he yeah, he's a comedian, too. Bodybuilding. No, I don't know any. It, you got to remember, this is like 15, 20 years ago. So, you okay. know, it was a while ago. Not 20, okay. but like maybe 15, 16 years okay. ago. So those, you know, where I don't know if this guy Nick DiPaolo was a comedian back then. Yeah, you know? he was a comedian. I don't know. That's what I was asking. But wow. But that's we had crazy. so many. Dude, so many musicians, too. My God, all these fucking... You know, the, like, uh, I don't know, the, 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 the guy, I remember the guy from Iron Maiden was saying when he was singing, he saw, like, one of the times he saw, like, a, a fucking demon coming out, like, crazy shit, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. just insane stuff, you know? We, we had just so many fucking people. I can't remember them all, though. That's the problem, yeah. you know? Um, so, on the, also, going back to the Vice TV, uh, there was a girl in that show. That, you, no, who do you know I, that? Did you meet that? Who was that girl? No, right. they weren't there when I was filming it. They, oh, they weren't there when you're going. Some might be out in LA. See, when they do these things and you see people, even if we're on the same film, like the the guy that's narrating that, and Arnold went back to the gym. That guy's a famous guy. You know who he is. He's a, uh, I forgot his name. You know who he is. It's actually a famous like, comedian guy. You've seen him. He's oh, been around oh. forever. He's probably my age. Oh, wow. Yeah, because I was no, looking at that. I thought his voice and his voice. Was, you'll you'll see it, but he wasn't there when I was there. Oh, okay. I you thought the girl I mean? might have been there because I don't know. I don't recognize the girl. No, I, I was there, and then they were doing it. Dave Chappelle, and uh, what's his name? Jim Brewer was there. No, Jim Jim Florentine was there. Uh, wait, I get them both. I we interviewed Jim Brewer too, so I get them both mixed up because we did oh, it. Jim you know, voice the yeah. one with the blue eyes and looks their faces like this and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that's um, Jim Brewer. Yeah, I think yeah. Yeah. So um, we, you know. We, we just had, you know, we had a good time doing all that shit. So, I, you know, we did a lot of stuff. I did, I did so much, dude, not for nothing, but I've done so many TV shows, movies, other shit that I don't even remember. And <laughs> fucking, I don't think there's a bodybuilder aside from Lou and Arnold that have done more mainstream TV than me. Now, there's, I, I think you're right. I think you're right. There's people like, like, uh, like, uh, what's his name? My, my, um, like, for instance, um, Oh my God, he's my friend. Jay Cutler. You no, know, Eugene Mission. Eugene Mission's done like, you know, like background scenes and like Law and Order and different things yeah, like yeah. that. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like they'll play like a bouncer in a bar. Mm -hmm. Whenever I go on, I go on as me. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, yes. I, you mm -hmm. know, I go on as me. I've done like little movies and shit. I was in the background scene of Goodfellas, you know, which was yep. filmed and not at no, I was in a jail scene. And, uh, you know, you can't even see me. So it's pointless. My ex-wife was in it with me and shit. Um, we dressed in, he had to dress his seventies clothes. It was when they were, and that was the scene where they were in the jail. Yeah. They were in the jail. And he, stuff in the jail. What's his name was talking to his wife. Uh, yes, uh, Ray Liotta. Ray Liotta was talking to his wife and they're in a big scene where like, you know, that's when their wives come to see the, the husbands and it's a yes. big scene. We're way in the back. That was filmed at girls and boys high school in New York city. It was not filmed at a jail. You know what I mean? Same mm -hmm. thing. I was at a, I was at the Wanderers. I was a ducky boy that was filmed mm -hmm. at Field Field in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Joy Todd was my casting director. I did a lot of shit, Joe. You did a lot. Stuff. Yeah, you know you're I mean? all over the place. Yeah, I've done you a know? lot. You know, the Meat Puppet, the fucking Grave Diggers, the fucking, a lot of, a lot of wacky, crazy shit. I forget yeah. all the stuff that I've done. Yeah, I, I was going through your list. I mean, what was the Trisha show? Trisha the what? Show. Trisha, Trisha show. Trish, Trish. Uh, yeah, she's still on TV. Uh, she's this like a uh, black chick. She's got a TV show today. So you can Google it. I'm not sure which station. So I think it was on 11. I did that. I did that show. Uh, and it was filmed in the same studio when they moved from Chicago to Jersey. They would film in a Steve Wilco show. <clears throat> and uh, what's his name that just died? Jerry Springer. It was, Jerry in Springer. Same, it was in there. It was in there. Same. Mm -hmm. studio. We filmed that. Um, that's the one where I was telling you. They had me going down the street. They, sometimes they like to do these like pre-film shit, you know. Mm -hmm. well, they always do it. But anyway, they filmed me coming into the studio. So they had me walking down the street, you know, with the bang on my shoulder. Mm -hmm. I got to turn and go into the fucking studio. So they're filming me, you know, I got to look natural and everything. And all of a sudden, in the middle of filming, 
this fucking guy comes running across the street. Yo, Valentino, holy shit. And they're like, cut, what the fuck? Are you doing? Because he, inter- he, he, you know, he, yeah, in the middle he of our the theme. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it was all right. He, you know, he just was a guy who was a fan of, you know, like from Ramblin's. Ramblin' Freak. Ramblin Freak. I'm, doing, I'm looking at what I see, so I'm going the opposite. Point point this way. Right. Yeah. Ramblin' Freak, you know? So, so tomorrow at 10 p.m., Vice drops. I know I'm reminding you, too, to watch your own shit yeah. on TV. <laughs> it's actually, actually, they show it at 8 p.m., 10 and then, p.m., and then midnight again. And okay, I so three, three probably times, and you probably won't even watch it. You probably won't even watch it. I, if I remember, I'll watch it. I would, if there's anyone out there that can tape that shit, you know what I mean? Because I'd like to see the tape of it if I missed it. You know, I'm I'm just one of the few people that narrate, you know what I mean? But mm-hmm. he, I'll send you the video. Uh, the video. Jesus, Mary and Joseph. I'll send you the the email where yeah. he said, now, I don't know. I've never seen the finished product. They only saw that one clip. But he said, bro, you sunk that shit home. Because I was saying crazy shit. And I, you see how amped I am? People don't realize that they think like, oh, Greg must be on fucking Adderall's. I'm not. No, Joe you're not. me on the phone, and I'm like, this is of Joe will call me for five minutes. An hour and a half later, Joe's like, hey. I'm like Greg. hey, he's going to the gym. He's got his girlfriend. She's, he's I'm fine. like, oh, Greg, what are you doing? I'm like, shut him up. I'm like, shut him up. Because I talk. You, know, you talk forever and ever. Oh, well, I can talk. You know me. I can talk. But the other thing is, too. Is that well? That's good because sometimes you'll get these guys you interview and they're like, yeah, oh, we did. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you talk forever. We got to be like, okay, um, okay, let me think of something else to ask him. But you're but, like that all the time. That's yeah. That's no, I'm like this. Time. Nobody understands that I'm like this. If I'm no. on the phone with you, or I'm like this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, time. you're like that. All you're you know, not on they, drugs. You're just very. They actually tight. tell people like when I was doing even like the Arnold film. I've done mm-hmm. a million of them, but it would, every time I do a film, they'll tell me like because uh, the Arnold one's the last one I've done. And they'll tell me, uh, Greg, can 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 you take it down a little bit? You know what I mean? Because I mean, you're too amped. You know what I mean? So I have to like, okay. So Arnold did this, and you know, otherwise I'm like fucking Arnold, bro. Yeah, you know, I'm like that shit. You know. So I. Also, oh, the vice TV told you to put it down. Yeah, oh yeah, he always says his, his name is Anthony Lappy, I think. Um, uh, he's he's the you know one of the producers and stuff. He does a lot of stuff. I got big. I got really big things coming. You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. you know, it's with these people, A and E, Vice, all this shit. Yeah. I got really be all over. I'll show you the emails and stuff, but you know, I don't want to say anything because then you open your mouth and then you fucking shoot yourself in the foot. Yeah, you know? shoot yourself in the foot. Yeah, you got a lot of good stuff. So tomorrow, 10 p.m., well, 8 and then 10, it'll be on Nine Lives of Arnold. And I also want to give a shout out and promote Mr. G's protein cookies. Yeah. Because I think those are good cookies. I'm going to actually order some because he has a Momo box. Yes, he has the Momo box. And, he, and, and uh, you have to go to. Uh, uh, it's it's uh, CaptainProteinsCookies.com and Yes, Captain you, Proteins and, you know, yes. People bitch about price but they do, they, you, One cookie is equal to 10 cookies The fucking, the, the peanut butter Cup is is the most Amazing thing I've ever eaten It's 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 like, it's it's actually Unholy, that's how good it is, you know what I mean Yeah, it's, it's really it's so good, it's evil You know, and uh, You know, what people don't understand is that You can't, you know, you have one bite Is equal to the size of another peanut butter cup so yeah. one one thing is it's this big and it's like like that fat you know yeah you and lucia ate i mean I think lucia ate them all when she when he gave you the box yeah how dare she the box is for me <laughs> no i was sure everything went on. i've been together yeah. for a long time forget it she's yeah. she's just as nuts as i am as you as you uh, probably you're damn right you just you know what i mean yeah so greg again thank you so much for coming on again i'm sure i'm gonna talk to you probably tomorrow in a couple of hours and say hello <laughs> Before I hit the gym, right? McGreg, thank you. I love you, brother. I love you, you too, know, man. You're, you're the best, you know, and Lucia, too. I love her, too. Thank She's you the best. for everything. And thank you, George, wherever you are. You're up there in George the George is somewhere in the background. Somewhere. He's in the background. He's, He's in the great powering studio. everything. In the sky. <laughs> again, Greg, thank you for everything. I will talk to you again. Let's watch that show, Nine Lives of Arnold. All right? Nine thank lives you, brother. Thank you. Talk to you later, man. Thanks, man. All right.